Oh, sure. Welcome to Basis Project. My name is Miles, and your name is Stuart A. Swartlow. And what brings you to the United Kingdom? It was an airplane, My but uh, I was. Uh, I am here to do uh, seminars and consultations and interviews. Now, for those who don't know who you are, uh, what's your basic background? Well, in Montauk order project, for instance. Montauk Project, yes, exactly. But uh, because I was in Montauk Project, I have to give a background of my family. My great uncle Yakov Sviridlov was the first president of the Soviet Union. His son Alexei, who was my cousin, started KGB. My grandmother Maya Sviridlov was a Soviet spy during World War II. And another great uncle of mine, Benjamin Sviridlov, started mind control and programming in the Soviet Union in the 1930s. So in effect, it was one of the earliest mind control programs in the world. My grandfather, Mikhail Sviridlov, was sent to Great Britain to start the Communist Party here. And he arrived in Liverpool and uh, did uh, his work. And when he was successful, he was then sent to the United States to do the same thing there. Now, what do you mean by mind control? There's an awful lot of technologies involved in that. Yes, of course, in the old days, uh, it involved uh, drugs, chemistry, uh, torture, that kind of thing. And that actually continued on until the 1960s and 70s. But once we get into the late 80s, early 90s, mind control was developed uh, through satellite transmission so that you didn't have to be taken to a, a specific location to be programmed. You could be programmed eating lunch or sleeping or going about your daily business. Yeah, similar to the film They Live. Similar to that, yes. So, uh, so can you describe the techniques involved in, in these types of mind control? Yes, and uh, it was actually pre-Montauk uh, project. Montauk was actually 1970 to 1983. But uh, we have to thank uh, the Germans during World War II. Uh, for developing procedures that fractured the mind pattern of a human being through torture. They developed what is called psychic driving, where you bring a person to extremes, several hours or days of extreme cold and then extreme heat. You can give them uh, starvation for several days and you overfeed them, make them sleep for days and then keep them awake. Fractured, the mind doesn't know what to expect. And then this was developed further by Dr. Ewan Cameron, who, uh, after the war, brought the Nazi techniques to Canada, actually, uh, in the now, late 1940s. He's a Scot uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron was a Scottish scientist who was very interested in this kind of work. And after the war, as uh, people know now, uh, in the U.S. it was Project Paperclip, where they would bring uh, valuable Nazi uh, scientists, doctors, etc., to the United States, Canada, UK, even to the Soviet Union, where they would continue their experiments and they were saved from the Nuremberg trials, etc. And Dr. Ewan Cameron got the uh, German information and he started clinics in Montreal, in Ottawa, in Toronto, and he en enveloped or, or, or enhanced the psychic driving. He started out in mental institutions where he would have the subjects uh, uh, in a room where they would have a split uh, board between their eyes. One side would see uh, a flower blooming, another side would see an animal being ripped apart. And one ear would be classical music and another ear would be loud, horrendous music. Was it important which side saw what scene? They would switch sides so that the left brain, which is the ego, a physical reality based side and the right brain, the creative, emotional, spiritual side would then be confused as to what to accept and the mind would then fracture. And that's when programming was uh, initiated in the mind pattern. They knew through the German experimentation that uh, the most you could fracture a mind would create a, a geometric shape in the mind of a cube of 13 by 13 by 13 and that would lead to 2197 compartments uh, that could be programmed into subpersonalities, full personalities, specific functions, constructs, etc. Okay, we were talking about uh, you were talking about the details of fracturing the mind. There are s some MK Ultra style um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, if I use a wrong phrase, where the, uh, 
in this country there's a great deal of child abuse involved and there is a huge scandal involving uh, children's homes and the, the key of Solomon has been mentioned in terms of fracturing the child's mind uh, using an energetic shock of the young child's energies into the psyche and breaking the, the mind that way. Is this something that you were involved with or, or not involved with but is this part of the te techniques that were used because this is something which connects with the elite, the, the high families but also why do you need to fracture the mind? What is the reason? Why, is, why does it take so much effort? Why is there so much going into doing that? Under so-called normal circumstances, uh, the human mind is under operation of a core personality. And the core personality will function uh, in an intact uh, manner uh, during uh, daily life, etc. However, when uh, trauma and extremes are introduced uh, simultaneously, the mind cannot handle the overload of input. And so it starts to dissociate. In fact, very often uh, the personality will actually leave the body uh, to a degree so that it doesn't have to experience the pain and trauma that is being inflicted upon it. And so the mind then starts to compartmentalize so that a portion of the mind will handle what's being done while another portion of the mind is distracting the consciousness or the personality from the trauma. And if this is done repetitively, then both the uh, distraction and the uh, awareness start to fracture because they can't handle the overload. Are there specific advantages in different techniques for different outcomes? Uh, the techniques that have been used actually for quite a thousand, many thousands of years have been, of course, through nar narcotics, through pain and torture, but uh, it's also understood that uh, human sexual energy is one of the most powerful energies that exists and so if they use that as the manner of uh, torture and pain then the uh, the mind opens up in incredible ways what do you mean by incredible well for example the uh, the process of of orgasmic release the mind opens up it is uh, or orgasmic energy is actually the uh, replication of when the god mind released to uh, create all of reality so that's why humans are compelled to to replicate this over and over again it's it's a replication of the god mind the creation energy so by gaining access to that are you saying that we could then engineer reality correct and i always use the analogy that uh, thoughts are film the brain is the projector and physical reality is the screen and so if you don't like the movie that's playing you change the film which is the way you think however uh, the film can be replaced uh, artificially uh, through this programming process. And that's what the Illuminati powers that be do in order to download certain softwares into the mind so that certain functions uh, via triggers are accessible. Could you explain those terms? Well, there is a difference between programming and mind control, and I know a lot of people use them synonymously. Programming is the actual software that's installed with the foundations of all the functions and alters. Mind control is the operation of that programming. And that is also different than brainwashing. Brainwashing happens every day. Your parents can brainwash you, school, uh, politics, religion especially, and that's just telling you something over and over again until you believe it. But the programming and mind control is an embedded a pattern that actually hooks onto your foundational mind patterns and is an overlay and so you think that it's your own thought when actually it's been artificially introduced so what's the agenda behind those the agenda behind all of this is to create a society that is robotical uh, very similar to what you see on the Borg in Star Trek you know, you report to a computer system, you don't question anything, you don't deviate from your functions, you do what you're told, and uh, there is no uh, independent thinking to do otherwise. The part that is important is that to the Illuminati, uh, this is a form of their society, this is their culture, 
And they do this to ensure that the culture does not deviate from its agenda uh, through eons of time. Many observers would say that normal humans have invented creativity. They have art, they have a whole pile of new things in their minds. It would infer that by some other group of people demanding a hive mind or a bored mind or a cyborg mind or something that is totally controlled, that they are maybe different to other people here. You know, everybody has the same potential. And uh, as far as a hive mind is concerned, uh, yes, that is exactly what they would like. A ruler, the queen bee or the, wh whoever it happens to be, sends out or transmits a signal to the worker bees, the slaves who carry out that signal or order. And uh, that is what the Illuminati wish. Remember, we're on a planet of over seven and a half billion people. The Illuminati, Committee of 300, all the control systems, if you add them up, it's only a few hundred thousand people. And that might sound like a lot, but in comparison to billions, it's minute. And so armies and weapons are not enough. The population could overwhelm that small minority. And so the most logical thing that they can do is mind control the population. Okay, Stuart, you were you talking about the, the intricacies of, of the many different types of, of mind control. What I want to what I want to look at is your role in this. And you mentioned the intelligence services and the Russians, but there's also a Prussian influence on our education to make all our children into very obedient uh, people who don't have inventive cr creativity mm -hmm. and imagination, dangerous imagination, some commentators have, have described this. Mm -hmm. What ultimately is the, the purpose of all this and where is it taking us? Purpose of all of this mind control is to create a civilization that is obedient to the rules and regulations, that pays attention to the news media, the politicians, the religious leaders, and the, and the, uh, the, the school teachers. So that uh, it's like Simon sees, Simon says, Simon does. And so when they say something, you do it, no questions asked, a complete and total obedience. And this will ensure the continuation of the society that they want. Now, the leaders of our world, and I know that will be strange to many people who aren't familiar with the information, have a descendancy from the reptilians who colonized Lemuria, uh, then uh, created the uh, civilization in Sumeria, became uh, uh, the Chaldeans, the Mesopotamians, the Babylonians, and Khazars, and so on, until they went into Western Europe and everywhere else in the world. And uh, they reported in those days to their reptilian leaders. However, uh, since uh, the last uh, hundred or so years, there has been uh, a, a decision within the leadership of the Illuminati to create their own empire with the Earth as its headquarters, to create and um, access technology both from here and elsewhere so that they can create a new galactic empire with themselves as the head and the Earth as the headquarters and fan out into the known universe and other universes. And that is the ultimate goal of the Illuminati. That's why they have created the um, particle beam accelerators at CERN and Fermi Labs and building a third one soon in Japan, which is actually surprising to me. And the, of course, the cover story for these things is that they're, they're looking for the God particle. But everything is a God particle. Everything that exists is a God particle. That's just a cover story. They're trying to collapse other parallel universes into this one where the Illuminati and the control systems have uh, been uh, successful in their agenda. And so we are seeing a lot of anomalies in time and space because of this. But I will say that uh, whether you consider it fortunate or not, there's yet another group uh, which is based in the Kuiper Belt, uh, which considers the Earth to be the Iraq of uh, the galaxy and needs to be liberated whether we like it or not, and they are sabotaging this. Not because they're love, light, and peace, and not because they like humanity, but because they consider it to be a threat to them. So there's a lot of factions within factions within factions that are out there. It's a very complicated situation, and humanity is caught in the middle of all of it. Go into detail. That's a great opening paragraph. Well, uh, a few years ago, 
uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, NASA reported strange objects in the Kuiper Belt. And the Kuiper Belt is a region of space that surrounds our solar system, kind of like an envelope of uh, small little objects and, and energies. And uh, they would report one one day, two days later, another one, and it started to become very suspicious. And then they stopped reporting on this. Then we saw uh, these objects uh, coming out of the sun, these huge objects that were even reported by NASA, and they would make their way towards the Kuiper Belt. This was also uh, very suspicious to the news media and to the public. And so in order to distract from that, they decided to say that uh, Pluto is also a Kuiper Belt object. And therefore, there's nothing to be concerned about because we've, had, we've seen this all along. And uh, they, they, they declassified Pluto, it's no longer a planet, and it became a, a mini planet, and it became a, a Kuiper Belt object. And to this day, we don't know what uh, they consider Pluto to be anymore. But these objects, these, these um, vehicles, uh, are amassing in the solar system and they are sabotaging um, the Illuminati and CERN and all the other projects that the Illuminati have. You may recall a few years ago that NASA sent two uh, vehicles to the moon and they were going to bomb the moon. The idea was to see if there was water that would come up from the moon. Well, the moon is an artificial object to begin with. And so uh, they sent this uh, vehicle that had the bomb and another one with a camera to follow it. And you could watch it online or 24-7, uh, yes? And then as soon as it got to the moon and they were about to bomb the moon, guess what? There was a technical difficulty and the camera went out and it didn't come back on until after it was all over. And that was actually uh, the destruction of a Kuiper Belt monitoring device that was on the moon that they tried to, to destroy. And it gets a, to be a little bit complicated there. Uh, Explain the complexities of this. The complexities are that there are other factions on the Earth that are actually in alignment with the Kuiper Belt beings. For example, um, after, well, from 1938 to 1944, uh, the Third Reich built the Paradise for the Führer in uh, Antarctica, and they called it Base 211 or New Berlin. And uh, they sent many people, uh, Aryan-looking people from Germany, Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, Scandinavia, any, any occupied nation, and they sent them down to Antarctica and they were seen again. Uh, it's in interesting that this area, which is located in the Norwegian section of Antarctica, Queen Maudland, Queen yes, so the Germans call Nuschwabenland. And uh, when you Google Earth this area, it's fuzzed out. You can't see it. They, they, they shaded out so you can't understand what's going on that's where admiral birds it was uh, actually admiral bird was in the actual south pole itself this is a little further north uh towards the coast of antarctica uh, but yes even admiral bird in 1947 or 46 uh, when he went down there said uh, he met with these very tall aryan looking people who said uh, get out of here you're not you don't belong down here and also 1946 to 1947 was uh, Project High Jump, uh, where the US and Canada and Britain sent uh, warships. And sabotage. I wonder if that's secret code. Yes, it is. <laughs> Don't hold back when you, when you mention uh, uh, certain groups, if you wish to Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so uh, they sent this uh, project down there to it's for war, war purpose and uh, over 50 American uh, military people were killed they could not fight against whatever technology was down there and then they returned after eight or nine months now I went to Antarctica in, in 2010 and I visited several bases uh, from Argentina Chile uh, Ukraine British a uh, base down there and the, what was interesting on the British base there was this big plaque uh, outside the base that said it was built to monitor the enemy so I said what enemies are perhaps there are penguin terrorists or, or, or walruses that are you know a danger to society but of course Pelicans, perhaps. Well, there was actually more penguins than, and seals. Uh, actually, walruses are at the, at the North Pole. Uh, but uh, so that was an interesting observation to see there. I visited the Ukrainian base and I asked for a tour. 
and they showed me the bathrooms and the bedrooms and their uh, this most southern bar and, and on the earth but they would not show me any of the techno technological the equipment French they had. French and Italians lost the base down there, Concordia base. Yes, the, I, from what I understand there's still no French or Italian base anymore and the Russian base in Lake Vostok as you know had very mysterious uh, anomalies uh, where there was radiation and ELF rising up from underneath the frozen lake and in fact Lake Vostok underneath the ice went up 65 degrees and anomalously. Uh, a couple of years ago the Russians were drilling to see what was down there uh, and then it was reported even on CNN and BBC that uh, the team disappeared. The Russian team was gone um, and uh, there was no communication or contact. But if you went on Russian news, you found out that yes, indeed, uh, after several days they were in communication and they reported that underneath the ice they found a gigantic swastika flag under the ice. And so, uh, to get back to the uh, first part of what I was saying, the Fourth Reich is in league with these beings in the Kuiper Belt uh, to create um, disruptment, um, and sabotage to the Illuminati plans. Uh, again, not for the purpose of uplifting and, and helping humanity, but for their own agenda of control and manipulation. And so it's my understanding that once they are successful in the elimination of the Illuminati, the Kuiper Belt beings will uh, allow the Fourth Reich to administer the Earth for them and incorporate it into a different galactic network. Back in the uh, late 1960s, uh, the U.S. government was in contact with a certain alien group who called themselves the Network. They claimed that they were a group of 17,000 planets, uh, both in this galaxy and the nearby Andro Andromeda galaxy, and that their leaders were not even from this physical universe. They were from another universe, and they were asked why were they here and their answer was that our planet is in their jurisdiction, in their territory, and so they have every right to be here to monitor what we're, we're doing and, and what's going on. Sounds like the Federation in Star Trek. Yes, except there's no prime directive. <laughs> they are basically uh, here to, to control and manipulate. Are you, are there any, uh, are there, one of the people I've interviewed, a guy called Chris Thomas, described a group which was held out of the... Um, they couldn't get into our solar system, i.e. in the Kuiper Belt. And he called them Balon. And they had some individuals here that were working to get that mm. in. And the various accelerators, as you mentioned earlier, was mm. a way of breaking down the solar system's natural defenses so they could get in. Right. But there's only, I think, two places they could do that, the sun and... Well, anyway, I don't want to go into details. Well... Actually, and I, I talk about this in my Simultaneous Existence uh, seminar, a black hole in one universe is an entry point, it's an entry of a vortex, which the exit point is a star. So all stars, including our sun, are exit points of black holes in alternate universes or parallel universes, and vice versa, black holes in our universe will go into stars in other universes, and that is the natural vortex. It's the, it's the natural way the multiverse, as they now call it, uh, shares energy, breathes in and out, if you will, and that's how energy is maintained and balanced throughout of creation. And so that is how many of these beings enter into our uh, solar system and galaxy, is through these star portals, because that's what stars are. And uh, I will tell you that the reason it's such a concern is because um, when we do nuclear experiments, when we have pollution, etc., it not only affects our world, but goes interdimensionally uh, and affects uh, parallel universes as well. So that is why they consider it to be important uh, to stop what's going on here. That fits with um, what I was told yesterday by Peter Padgett, how that, that the Beth Waters incident here, mm. all the nuclear weapons were neutralized, and the same thing happened in the Russian weapons system at the same time, mm -hmm. because, of the, because of this effect of these nuclear... Mm. But you see, uh, the misconception is by New Agers and 
certain researchers is that because these uh, aliens are uh, stopping these nuclear weapons, they're trying to help the Earth. And that's not the reason. They're trying to protect themselves from, from what we may gain. Now, I have to also say that there are civilizations or, or, or groups that uh, don't care about that that they are in league with certain governments on this planet in order to make a totalitarian dictatorship. When people talk about an alien agenda, there are many alien agendas. It depends on the groups. They don't work all together. In fact, very few of them work together. And so we have agendas that are for uh, control and manipulation. Some are for colonization. Some are for using humans for experiments or, or to be placed in zoos. Some you want humans for food. You see, so there's many different agendas, and that's why it's so complicated. What can we do to find out about this? What can we positively do to educate ourselves about it? To educate humanity is a task. Because quite frankly, most people on this planet are so involved in their daily lives, paying their mortgages, uh, keeping their jobs, uh, having food, etc., most people don't care what's going on outside their front door. Most people don't care who their leaders are as long as they have their um, cigarettes and their beer and everything else that they want to entertain themselves with. And that's the sad part about humanity. And so in the work that I do is I, I tell people what I know. They can accept it or reject it. That's their business. But at least I know uh, that I'm telling them the truth and they can do with it what they want. I feel an obligation. To do this because number one of my family background uh, you know my my great uncle Yakov Sviridlov uh, killed over a million people in the Soviet Union and uh, my other uncle uh, created the mind control that affected millions and millions tens of millions and so um, I feel an obligation uh, to to do something about this I myself at the Montauk project was involved in experimentations and projects that uh, were not helpful to other people so I and, and when I was being deprogrammed and developed deprogramming techniques for myself and that I teach others, I felt uh, a need to share this so that people will not go through what I went through. I don't want my children and my grandchildren to go through that. Could you go into the Montauk project? We've heard of Cameron and... Uh, the Duncan Cameron stars. and all these Good people. Camera. Yes, yes, and it was, uh, people think of Montauk Project only about time travel, but that was not the original purpose of it. Uh, Montauk Project initially was about mind control and programming, genetic manipulation, esoteric weaponry, uh, weather manipulation, and then it went into alien and even Atlantean technology, and then going into time travel and deep space travel. So it was many, many different projects under one umbrella. And uh, the time travel was actually towards the end of the, th the whole That's thing. That's where we have this link. About the, the, the stuff that we know in the public domain is there's a big radar antenna, a SAGE radar antenna. Yes, it's yes. an abandoned base. There is, um, it was located near some kind of pyramid energy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Montauk Base actually was built, or they, they started building it in 1799. George Washington uh, created a, a lighthouse and a small underground area for supplies to protect the continental United States in case of British invasion. And of course, then over the decades and centuries, it was expanded and expanded. Um, and then they finally, at one point in the uh, 20th century, broke into uh, an area that uh, looked like the top of a pyramid. Now, if you look at pictures of the beaches of Montauk uh, from the early 1900s, you will see people standing uh, and taking photographs next to these top, looks like the top of a pyramid. And of course, everyone thought that the Indians in the area built it a long time ago. And then in the great hurricane of 1938, uh, the rest of these uh, pyramids were tops were, were buried in the sand. You still you don't see them anymore. Uh, but during World War II, you mentioned plural. How many pyramids? There were about two or three that were sticking up, uh, even as late as the early 1900s, and then by the 1938 they were buried up already. Uh, George Washington, being a good old mason, he must have selected that area because he knew something about it. Well, interestingly, the Montauk Indians call their leader Pharaoh, uh, just like the ancient Egyptians. And in fact, in parts of uh, Long Island and other places in North America, there are ancient Egyptian artifacts 
which indicate that they were there thousands of years before everybody else th thinks anyone came. Is this is this is the pre-disaster, pre-high civilization that existed here that was built all that stuff, or, or who built it? Well, the the pyramid that they broke into as they were expanding the base, they determined was uh, Atlantean, and uh, actually Montauk Point is the top of a mountain range or an archipelago that extends into the Atlantic Ocean and leads towards what Atlantis was or where it was. And they did find technology inside this pyramid and incorporated that into the base at Montauk. And there were nine levels of uh, base underneath the ground. And uh, yes, uh, the base was built with SAGE radar which became obsolete uh, in the 1960s to protect against Soviet invasion of uh, the east coast of the United States. And so uh, when it became obsolete, uh, the base was going to be designated as derelict. But because it was in an isolated area, surrounded on three sides by, by water, there's only one road to get in from the west. And so people only lived there in the summertime because the winter was kind of bleak and nobody went there. So it was very easy to create experimentation that nobody would see. What's the, what sort of experimentation? Well, uh, what I was involved in, as I mentioned, was uh, the, uh, the genetic manipulation. They did uh, not only mind control experimentation, but also sexual magic ritual, uh, which was quite, that's partly how they fractured the minds of children and adults. They would start out with people they considered to be expendable. Nobody would miss them. Uh, children of drug addicts, children who were in foster care, uh, orphans, etc. And then they found out through the German experiments, or I should say the scientists that were brought from the Nazi experimentation, that a certain type of genetics was uh, um, usable or more usable, desirable for the input of mind control. What type of genetics? Those that were considered to be Celtic, Germanic, and even Slavic. Basically, those who had lighter hair, lighter eyes, have an enzyme configuration in their genetics that enables the downloading of uh, programming software to a greater extent. People who uh, had darker eyes, darker hair, darker skin, did not have that capability and were considered to be more um, uncontrollable. And that's why uh, you see the Illuminati trying to eliminate native peoples in Africa, South America, Asia, those who are considered undesirable. Until they came up with a very bright idea uh, in the late uh, 70s that uh, they could try to manipulate that as well. And so Michael Jackson actually was a prototype uh, of uh, taking a darker skinned person, changing their characteristics so that they could be more downloadable. And that's why over the decades, he went from being black to white, male to female, human to alien. He didn't know what he was. What do you mean changing? How were they doing? Well, they were programming him to change his features and characteristics so that he would be more conducive to programming. And then they could use that uh, function, or I should say that recipe, uh, to extrapolate that into other populations that were considered unprogrammable. But unfortunately for him, uh, he became overloaded. And that is a, a problem with the programming, because when they get something that's really usable, they really use it and they put in as much as they possibly can until it overloads, just like if you put too much software in a computer, it shuts down. And he shut down and he needed drugs and uh, medications in order to function. And then he became a liability. And when a programming icon becomes a, pro a liability, they eliminate them. John Lennon as well? John Lennon, uh, uh, many, many people, My Michael Jackson, uh, uh, there have been so many over the years. But why do they use a public icon like that? Are they trying to somehow transmit this to the general public? Yes, so uh, when they take what we call a programming icon that have very specific uh, softwares running and they put them before a camera or they uh, have music that's uh, uh, on the radio uh, or in a movie, what have you, those who are uh, programmed 
to follow that icon will do the same. They will do the same functions. Look what happened when Britney Spears shaved her head. Next day, thousands of people around the world shaved their head. They didn't know why, but they did it because their icon did it, so they had to do it. So it was a very successful program. Yeah, but uh, you know, what they did was, uh, in Montauk, um, when they would torture a child or an adult, whatever they were using at that, that time, the room was surrounded by devices that absorbed the energy. Um, what they learned is when uh, a child especially, because ch children have this greater energy of fear when they're traumatized, and if they execute a child at that moment of heightened fear, the pineal gland produces a drug called adrenochrome. And if they extract that adrenochrome, it becomes a very powerful um, chemical that can be used for programming and for sexual magic ritual or any other uh, ritual that the Illuminati want to participate in. Also, the energy or the, 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 the components of the, of the atomic structure of this adrenochrome can be downloaded uh, into a software that can be then uh, enhanced, uh, boosted, transmitted to satellites, and then radiated down through scalar waves to a particular person, place, or thing, or, or to genetic groups, or to entire countries. Uh, and that's how they also are able to enhance their control systems. So this will explain um, our telecommunication systems and, and what's involved in the communication systems. Yes. You know, in 1988, uh, President Reagan uh, was very happy to announce that the entire planet was ringed by satellites so that there was no place on Earth that would be considered remote anymore. But what he didn't say to complete the statement was that no place was no, every place was now controllable. All mind control could be transmitted to anywhere on the Earth, no matter how isolated it was. And so when people think you know, and they tell me, well, I'm going to move to New Zealand, I'm going to move to Ecuador because I get out of the control system. No, it's a new world order. It's a global order. It doesn't matter what country you go to, where you think you're going to hide. The transmissions are there. Now, that means a very complicated system, which mm. it's naive to think there's a couple of people in, in, a, in a base somewhere looking at a, a screen, clicking a mouse to say that implies an artificial intelligence. Correct, correct. Uh, you know, there's no one listening in for every single person out there. Of course, they, that would take quite a lot of manpower. What they do is they have, that's why they want people to have cell phones and computers and even the electrical system in their house, which people have to realize is also part of the control system. So when you are on the phone or you're on a computer and you say something and you type a certain word, you say a certain thing, it registers and goes into a system which a computer reads out. If there's a consistent pattern of, a, of an issue, then it may go to a person to review, uh, to determine if a, uh, a contra program or a, a, a program that fixes these problems should be transmitted to that particular person. So uh, there's a few levels before a person actually looks at uh, an issue. Uh, otherwise, it's just a general transmission to, the, to humanity. Now, the, the entire planet is uh, uh, programmed. 100% of the population has some sort of programming, but there is about uh, 5 to 8% at this point who are specifically programmed. And that means they have many deep layers of programming uh, for specific functions in the uh, global agendas that will be uh, perpetrated upon the Earth uh, shortly and already have been. One, for example, which is in process is the financial collapse, uh, which is in process right now, imminently, so that they can replace the uh, currency with a global currency and a credit system. Uh, the next big thing will be the staged alien invasion, where they will have you believe through Blue Beam Project that the Earth is being attacked from elsewhere. President Reagan announced this also in the 1980s that what this may happen. What do you happen. call Blue Beam? There's many different types of Blue Beam. Well, generally, Blue Beam Project is uh, satellite uh, transmissions through the ionosphere that predict 
that show a holographic image of a, an object, a face, religious figure, uh, whatever, whatever they're going to show, uh, so that people think uh, something is happening in the sky. A lot of the, uh, the vehicles that are seen these days are actually uh, blue beam holographic projections. Now this is not actually holographic technology, it's some other kind of technology which is feelable and now it is. Now it is. Uh, they tested this actually in 1962 in Havana Harbor. Uh, that's how old the technology is. Actually, it's based on alien technology. And uh, U.S. submarine surfaced not far from Havana Harbor and projected an image of the Virgin Mary over Havana Harbor so that the, uh, the, the communistic society would uh, become religious again and, and, and get rid of their leaders. Uh, that was just a test. Now you're correct. Uh, blue beam is so sophisticated it, it, you, they can project a holographic image that can actually be picked up on radar produce a sound and you would even be able to touch it um, in these closing stages what exactly do you want to get across to people not necessarily this country what's your bottom line on the mind control and other I mean, you, you're helping to deprogram people. What's the beef there? It's not just for any one country. I, I try, my hope is uh, all people will at least yes. look. You're, you're look. in England now, but... Yeah, yes, well, here it's here in England. Uh, well, this is like this one of the centers of mind control, isn't it? You have Tavistock here and, and other locations. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter the country because ultimately they all have the same uh, rulers behind the scenes. They don't recognize borders, and so uh, my—I don't know if I can say my goal, but my my hope is that people will wake up and realize that things are not the way they should be that they need to take control of their own mind i don't believe in physical revolution or physical violence the war has to be in here you have to take control of your your brain of your mind pattern of your emotions and do release work that will undermine the mind patterns of the programming and then release what's hooked on to those mind patterns and access your core personality reintegrate who and what you are sew those compartmentalized pieces of the mind back together so that uh, we can uh, have the society we're supposed to have why does this happen because as i said before we project out what's in our mind patterns and the world reflects it back so humanity as a species has a victimization mind pattern when you have a victimization mind pattern, you attract tyrants and oppressors. And so, what we see, it's really, we must take responsibility. You can't blame the Illuminati or the aliens. They are here because we're allowing them to be here. If we change the way we think, change the film, project out something else, then they will have no power over us. It could happen tomorrow if everybody would wake up and do it. Is that likely? No. Will it eventually happen? I believe so. I think that humanity uh, will be backed against the corner to the point where they'll say, hey, we've had enough and we're going to do something about this. The Illuminati, the mind control, the programming, all of this, they want you to think that you're disconnected from the source, from the God mind. But that can never be. They can only make you have an illusion that that is so. But in actuality, you can never be disconnected from Creator. And so it's my hope to teach people how to take that part of them, the creative part, and extrapolate that into their lives and project that out so all of this will go away. Okay, how, does, how do people wake up? This is what I teach in my work. I teach people how to balance the left and right hemisphere of the brain, how to work with their energy systems, how to deprogram, how to connect to their higher intelligence that's within them. I teach them color therapy, alternative healing, how to eat, how to exercise, basically how, how to be a, a human being. And so that's what I teach. And again, it's up to each individual to do this or not do this, their choice. And how do they do that? How do they get in contact or I mean if you can't do it personally is there, are there any others that you get? to be honest I don't know what other people do I only know what I do I don't really go to other websites or read other people's works because I'm too busy doing what I'm doing and of course my wife and I have expansions.com on the internet and we do our seminars webinars 
Uh, we teach uh, all kinds of classes. We have a blog. I uh, encourage people to take a look and see what they think. Okay, there's um, five things that you want to get across. Do you want to just... Five things to get across. Well... Well, we could make it around half a dozen if you want. Well... Or just one thing. You know, and, and they're not in any order of importance. That's just what comes to mind. And that the, the first thing is that, uh, and I tell this in all my classes, that there's nothing to fear. You are always loved. You can do nothing wrong. And when I say that, it's not that you should murder people. It's that whatever does happen, there's a reason for it and a lesson to learn from it. And that you must take control of your own mind so no one else takes control of your mind. And research who and what you are. What are your origins? Where did your family come from? And I encourage you to go to the sources, not to read in books or on the internet, but go to where you originated and go from that source back because that's where the information is. And uh, to uh, be kind to each other. You must be kind to each other. Get rid of the anger. Get rid of the hostility. Uh, there's no reason to fight. Now is the time to unify, but for the right reasons. Why now? What's happening now? Right now. We are in the very critical point of the entire collapse of society as we know it. It will start with the um, collapse of the economy. The Illuminati are creating artificially um, events that they will correlate to the Book of Revelation so that they can prove the validity of the Bible. And that's why we see every week uh, discoveries in the Middle East and in Europe and other places that uh, verify certain chapters in the Bible. We've even seen a Hebrew University in Jerusalem verifying the Shroud of Turin being 2,000 years old. And so that will establish the second coming of Christ, who will be a cloned being whose genetics will match the blood on the Shroud. Now before that happens, as I mentioned, will be the staged alien invasion. We will not see the so-called invading species, but a savior race, savior race will come uh, to chase them away and that will be presented as the reptilians who saved us and they will announce that they are our true ancestors, they're the mommy and daddy of human beings and then they will bring in the stage second coming who will announce the uh, new world order as his new holy empire and when they match the genetics to the shroud who's going to say it's not him and so as George Bush said after 9-11 either you're with me or you're against me so uh, there will be a, a, a dichotomy of those who will accept and those who will not accept. And my hope is to avoid getting to that point because there will be a lot of worse things before it gets better. But should all of this happen in the way that it's planned, ultimately those beings in the Kuiper Belt that I mentioned will make their own move. And the Illuminati are afraid of them because their purpose is to get rid of them. And, but again, there's no love, light, and peace in the Kuiper Belt either. It's just another control system with another agenda. And so that's why humanity has to open up uh, their minds and take control and realize what's going on and do something about it within themselves first and then project that out. So that is not to have fear, not to have violence. No fear. Know that. The, what, who created you? The, the God mind, as I call it, it has a love for everything that it created. And so if we realize that, you can never be alone. Everything you need is already within you. And you just have to express that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much, Faust. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Is that okay? That's fine. Excellent. It was brilliant. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Excellent. Great. No. Positive. I'm very concerned. About it.